wanted to direct your attention to the beginning. Um, so tomorrow, DuPont is visiting artists is going to do their presentation, which is called Warped Play. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Hello, everybody. Um, so, my name is Tamara Duplantis. I also go by Tammy. Um, I'm a composer of electronic music, a digital media artist, a game designer, often at the same time. Um, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, originally. Um, and I studied, if you care about this, I studied experimental music and digital media at Louisiana State University for my bachelor's. Um, electronic music and recording media at Mills College in Oakland for my MFA. And I'm about to start my PhD in computational media at the University of California, Santa Cruz. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so the common word there is media, and I've made work in a lot of them. Um, I've made like musical works for laptop ensembles, I've made text scores, I do like solo keyboard improvisation, net art, glitch art, etc. But the main crux of my work for the past half decade has been creating experimental musical art games for the Game Boy for performance and for play. Um, that's a lot of words, so to demonstrate before I talk any further, I'm just going to play one of these for y'all. Um, this is a piece called Serpidelic. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it, um, a little more afterwards, but if you had a Nokia phone in the 90s, it may look familiar to you. Um. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thanks. So, uh, so yeah, that's Serpidelic. It's a um, kind of audiovisual artistic take on the classic arcade snake genre with the intent of using the mechanics of snake as a framework for artistic and musical generation. As someone plays Serpidelic, the act of following the rules of the game, you are the snake, you go and eat the dots. Um, following the rules of the game generates these uh, Piet Mondrian style images and also generates the musical score depending on your position, the position of the dot, the position of like the previous dot, um, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so how did I get here? Well, I started off as a musician. Um, I play piano, I do a lot of improvisation. I'm from Louisiana, so I learned jazz. Um, but uh, before I started college, I became very interested in electronic music because it was something that I couldn't really emulate on just a plain old piano. Um, and I really wanted to be able to play it, so um, I went to study it, I learned some Max MSP, um, ended up at LSU, home of the Laptop Orchestra of Louisiana, or the LULs. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was, it, was, it, was a, it was a little while back. Um, but uh, here, uh, I became an electronic music performer and composer in my own right, writing music and designing instruments for the ensemble. And what I found really interesting to me uh, about writing for electronics was the interplay between performers and specifically like digital systems, the experience of improvising with an instrument that's actively reacting to what you're doing um, and in ways that the performer might not expect. Um, it really, it feels like a conversation. And then when you add other people to that equation, you know, it expands from there. Um, so my work with that ensemble um, kind of involved performers collaboratively working with systems that responded to their actions individually and as a group. Um, I really, like I said, I really like work like that. But one thing that I found while I was working there was that um, it's hard to, I don't know, it's hard for people to understand, I feel like, an aural system, like to, to really feel the cause and effect of, I did this thing and it went through this particular system and therefore this spits out. Um, so at that point, I started to make uh, visuals, visual representations of those systems while they performed so that if the audience had some, and if the audience had something to look at, uh, I decided that I might as well be showing them something, like showing them images that are meaningful to the intent of the piece. And at this point, I realized that I was making video games. <laughs> or rather that um, an audiovisual performance program is kind of functionally indistinguishable from an art game, you know, artistically meaningful interaction between a player and a computer that's paired with interesting visuals and sounds that better convey the meaning um, to the player or any spectators. It's, it's a game. It's a piece of art. I don't know. It's both of them at the same time. Um, and while I was working at Mills, I started working with the Game Boy specifically, um, honestly, in an, in an attempt to teach myself C. Um, and while I was working on that, I found that the way that I think about, um, like the way that I think about digital systems and the way that I think about music clicks really well with the Game Boy architecture and with the, um, and with the Game Boy sound chip. Um, even before I was working specifically with Game Boys, I was always using pulse waves and white noise, and it just, it works very well for me. So um, that's how we got to Serpidelic, which was one of my first pieces for the Game Boy. Um, now about the content of my work, uh, well, I create most of my work as a form of like catharsis and as a means to process difficult emotions. Serpidelic isn't one of those, so I figured it would be a nice one to start off with. <laughs> um, but it really helps me to make a system that models my thought process or some other like real world process. Um, gives me the ability to kind of feel out the bounds of it for other people to understand where I'm at and how I'm feeling and hopefully a way to see how my mental model of a situation might be different from the reality of it and how I might be able to break out of it. Um, I find myself gravitating more towards a couple different major themes and I'm gonna play a few that deal with them. Um, the first one that I want to go over is um, like loss and decay. Uh, to demonstrate that, I'm going to play two pieces for you that come from kind of similar, um, similar emotional origin points, um, dealing with the subject of grief, but then deal with it in different ways. Um, I'm going to switch out the cartridges here. This first one is called Downstream.
Yeah, so that one is downstream. Um, I think I'm, yeah, no, I'm gonna talk about this one now. Um, so with downstream, as far as the game is concerned, um, it's a, uh, so as far as the game is concerned, I, I made it at a point in my life in which like over the course of like a couple months, like it felt like every other queer friend that I knew was going through hell. Um, like I had one friend who ended up in like a mental hospital. I had another friend who was like, everyone was doing poorly and some of them didn't make it out. Um, and I was sitting there thinking about this, um, I was thinking about the way that when someone isn't quite out yet and something happens to them, um, just over like in personal experience, you know, I'll hear a lot of people talk about it. Well, no one knows why, you know, why they might've done that. No one knows why this might've happened. Um, and seeing example after, an exam like example after example and seeing that happening um, really got me like feeling the like societal weight of the like invisibility of like queer suffering that happens with that we may never know um, and I was thinking about that and I felt like I was st stuck in a river I felt like I was just like being pulled down um, and I decided to make a game to try to like clear my mind about it. And the f like the first thing I did, I m messed it up a little bit, and one of the bugs made it just fly out like that. It made all the uh, text I was trying to put in just pour out. And it looked and sounded exactly the way that I was feeling, so I decided to keep keep with it. Um, so uh, yeah, the mechanics of downstream are. You are floating downstream, the waters rush around you. You are lost. I'm sitting there with the text going by and by and by. And the only thing that I can do is press one of these buttons to hold on and stop where I am. I can't let myself, I can't really get myself out of it, but I can hold on to somewhere and just feel that spot. Um, and it, it feels like that. It feels like that kind of overpowering feeling of hopelessness to me when I'm playing it. And I, I don't know if it get, gets across, but people tell me it does, so, um, yeah, um, so that's downstream. Uh, this next one that I'm going to play is, um, also one about grief. I made it as a memorial for, um, a friend of mine, um, uh, Barney, Barney Canson, and when Barney passed, we had a, like, 24-hour, like, drone memorial for him at, Mills, and um, I decided to contribute to it with this piece. So it's a it's a um, it's a drone piece, and it's called Heartbeat for Barney. Um, it might take me a second to get it running because of how the Game Boy cartridges here work, but. Um
Yeah, so that's um, that's heartbeat for Barney. Um, yeah. Um, so the the other subject that I come back to in my work um, pretty often. Let me plug this back in for a second. Okay, the um, the other one that I come back to is um, you know about my identity, specifically my identity as like as terms of like being from southern Louisiana and being Cajun and how it intersects with other aspects of my identity. Notably, I'm a trans woman. Um, so, um, yeah, I have a larger piece that I made about that. Um, it's called uh, Chafalaya Arcade. Um, it's kind of has three different movements to it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to play through it and then maybe talk a little bit about yeah, maybe talk a little bit about that. Um,
So yeah, that was Atrafalaya Arcade. It was a, um, like I said, it was a big project of mine. It started off as, it started off as um, kind of an idea to create a like Game Boy Cajun Jam Band was, was the initial idea of it. Um, yeah, so uh, there are three different movements for this solo performance and the three different movements, obviously we have a rhythmic section, a harmonic section, a melodic section um, that are, when I was designing them and how to interact with them, I was thinking about the, um, like the main instruments that you have in like Louisiana, like folk music. Um, so I was thinking of kind of like the, the washboard and the triangle, um, the accordion and the violins. Uh, the fiddle. It's not anywhere in the text of this, but I call each of those instruments in order moshboard, bayou lens, and accordion because I like I like the puns. Um, but yeah, and while I was making it and thinking about how to perf like perform it, um, so again, as previously mentioned, I am I'm Cajun. I'm from Louisiana. I'm also a, a trans woman, and it's really hard to be trans in southern Louisiana. Um, so, uh, and I found myself like, you know, I found myself kind of feeling like I was a little exiled almost to the, to the West Coast um, and really wishing that I could like be back and feel comfortable back home um, and kind of knowing also that there's a time limit Right, my my family's all from like the coast of southern Louisiana, and like my grandma's house is gonna be underwater in about a decade. Like my dad's paper routes are already just they're gone. It's just Gulf at this point, point. Um, and feeling like there's a there's a time limit there. There's a time limit to those spaces to the to that geography. Um, you know, as much as we can do to like reclaim the land on the coast, it's still going away. And there isn't really, I feel like there's not nearly enough going on to combat that. Um, and like other communities um, in that area that my family's from are already like climate refugees. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, and it was just fe really, wishing that I could, wishing that I could be there more and playing too with nostalgia because the, you know, it's the thing that we've, that I haven't really talked about much, but th this is a nostalgic medium, right? Um, especially for people like my age and I'm sure a lot of y'all's ages, like um, when I think of this, I think of childhood and most other people think of childhood, but I don't think about necessarily the games. Like I don't think about I mean, I like Pokemon, but I don't think about Pokemon necessarily. I think about like playing it in the back seat of the car on the way to my grandma's house. It's what I think about, and I think about my childhood. So I wanted to make something for the Game Boy that felt a little indicative of like my my childhood, um, kind of a personal m nostalgia more than like, hey everybody, it's retro. Um, yeah, um, let's see. I'm gonna play one more really quickly um, and just because in the spirit of like this program and everybody working on new material I have a um, kind of somewhat unfinished I feel like project and I feel like sharing that with you also just so that you know again have the spirit of everybody's working on stuff um, you can see what I'm working on um, it's a I don't know. It's a um, project right now that's mostly just mechanical in nature, but I wanted to make a I wanted to make a game about kind of feeling feeling a little lost in lost where you are, kind of like floating around, and having somebody else who's also floating around and working really hard to try to be in the same spot, but it doesn't. You know, sometimes it doesn't always work out. Um, so this is a game called, oh, you'll see. Um, sometimes this thing's a little finicky. It's not going yet. 
There we go. Um... Um, I probably should have mentioned this so you could y'all could follow it before I started, but um, I'm I am controlling I was controlling one end of the line and the Game Boy was controlling the other end of it, and as basically as the this little um, piece here progresses, like each end, uh, the sensitivity of the movement changes rapidly. So um, yeah. And so the game is just to try to stay in the same place, and yeah, sometimes, some, sometimes, sometimes it ends up, sometimes it doesn't. But oh, whatever. Um, anyways, um, yeah. So that's all of my ramblings for right now. Um, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I realize I said that, and I can't see anybody's like. <laughs> I can't see anybody. So um, yeah, if uh, someone out there wants to. Yeah. We were just curious about, so when you play these games for us, how much, uh, like, how much improvisation is happening, and how much are you maybe, like, rehearsing your music? Mm hmm. Uh, that's a good question, and it really kind of depends on, like, it kind of depends on the game. Um, like, probably the most rehearsed thing that I have in here is, um, the middle section of a Chafalaya arcade, like there is there is a sequence of chords that I like to play and that I want to play. Um, yeah, it. Yeah, so um, that is kind of where it is. Um, others, there are things that I look out for, like in in downstream, the the notes that are playing are all going to be like the sequence is always going to be the same, but I can stop it at different spots, if that makes sense. Um, like if I didn't press anything, it would always sound exactly the same. It would always go through the same things. Um, 
but I stop it in different spots. And whenever I stop it in a, in a spot, um, uh, you know, at times it's going so fast that I can't necessarily pick out exactly which spot it's going to be and whichever one it ends up in, I like to play around with it and see what kind of sounds I can make out of it. Um, there was one time, um, there was a point in my artistic career when I was go uh, going by TM and there was one time I stopped it at a point where it just happened to be pl showing like the trademark ASCII symbol. And I was like, this is great. I'm going to play around with this a lot because it's kind of cute. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so it really depends on the piece, but for all of them, I try to make them so that there is a level of improvisation. And a lot of times I, you know, I, with some of these, I've played them so much that even if I want to improvise and I improvise a little bit, I still have like, like the thing that I like to do with it. Um, if you want to see other people doing it, drop by the lodge tomorrow because y'all are going to be playing, hopefully, if you want to play any of them. Um, and then maybe you'll see some different things that I haven't, that you weren't, that you didn't see here, you know. Um, does that answer? Yeah. Cool, thanks. Um, any other questions out there? Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so when I'm dealing with some kind of, like, like, when I'm dealing with, um, you know, my issues and my difficult emotions, it, like I said, it really helps me to kind of lay out every branch of that, like, um, that kind of, like, mental loop that I'm stuck in. Because I find, like, with a, with a lot of, at least, my mental issues, I just find that like, I get stuck in a loop, right? Um, and I can't really move on from it. So I sit there and say, okay, what's, what are the steps for, like what's the step for each of these, um, what's each like step of this loop that loops back around on itself? And I'll try to like build that in the game, right? Um, so, um, again with like, well, with the example of downstream here, like it was, it was just that I was like stuck on it, that I was literally stuck on it, and uh, on, you know, on everything that had happened, and couldn't really move oh, past it. So I made this thing where, like, the, you know, it was just going and going and going, and the only thing I could do was just stop and think about it for a second. Um, there's a another one. I didn't show it here because it's not really a Game Boy project, but um, what I've been trying to do more with my work is kind of show, like make the system, but also try to make a system that specifically helps me out of it. Um, so there was one that I was working on where um, you were kind of, it was kind of like a racing game sort of where, um, I had my little track that was going up the screen. I had, if you went off of the track and you like, um, like veered off, there'd be little like things to collect over there. You'd like get a whole lot of points, but you'd also like fall off. So you, and your little car was always like veering towards there. Um, and I actually I made it in therapy as a like metaphor for, or like I made the idea of it in therapy as a metaphor for like, I really always want to help people to the detriment of myself and a little thing to remind myself to like give myself a little self-care, you know? Um, yeah, I, I feel like it, like at least me personally as a creator, it helps me to just sit, sit down and like put it all down there and visualize it and to make some, make some kind of like system that reminds me to get out of it. That reminds me that like, okay, here is this system, but oh, I could just do this and I get out of it. And I, you know, I get it mentally. Um, I guess that's, that's talking about my m like mental health stuff, but it also kind of applies to grief too. Um, and other like difficult emotions of like, you know, sometime, sometimes you just get stuck and things feel bad <laughs> um, and just, sitting there and like being able to 
talk through it in whatever way you can, either verbally or like kind of in terms of like mental models and computer models of how you're feeling like it helps it helps me I hope it helps other people <laughs> um, yeah I hope that answered your question <laughs> um, do, does anybody else have anything I still can't see any anybody's I still can't see anybody um Um, outside of, outside of Game Boy stuff. Yeah. So, um, let's see, like I mentioned at the beginning, I started doing a lot of work in, um, like on like laptop ensembles and electronic music ensembles. Um, so for example, there's one that I did in that, like there's, there's one that I did over there called, uh, called Gap, where you had four different, again, a lot of the same, like, philosophy behind, like, um, like game mechanics and, and systems. But we had four players who were each controlling a frequency and um, were trying to hit this harmony that was supposed to be, like, your, your, your goal harmony. And as each player got closer to the interval that they were supposed to be with the person next to them, then their sound would get a little more vibrant, a little more agitated. It would kind of go like, you know, start from a sign tone, the that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, and everyone would kind of like flow around a bit and then kind of connect, like settle on a harmony, but then somebody's wouldn't exactly fit. So they'd start wiggling around again and kind of going in and out of tonality. Um, and the trick there was that there wasn't actually a, like a perfect harmony goal. Like everything was made so that there was just a little bit of wiggle room and it was just really up to the people to like find a compromise that worked for everybody and to be like, Oh, okay, this works. This is, this is the harmony. This has to be the harmony. Right. Um, and, uh, they didn't there. Um, I know, I'm proud of that one, so I like rambling about it. Um, I, I've also done a lot of work in just in sound. I did a lot of sound spatialization stuff um, a few years back. I do a lot of, um, like I said, improvisational, improvisational rec pro recordings on like toy keyboards. Um, I have a couple of different albums on like the uh, recorded off of the SK-1, which there are a couple of those in the sound studio, and I really adore them. I was so pleased to know that there were some here. Um, yeah, um, and just sitting there and trying to, trying to play around with the, um, like, trying to play around with that medium and just see what I can make out of it. Um, I've also done a few collaborations with some folks. Um, I made a net art piece with um, a game developer and digital artist named Andy McClure um, that you can find on uh, dryad.technology is, is Andy's site for, for, for net art stuff. Um, and I've also done some collaborations with uh, another game developer and digital artist named uh, Lauren Schmidt. We made a game called Pluinola, which was like, um, again, kind of similar to the stuff here. Lauren wanted to make a Tammy game, quote unquote. Um, but uh, it would run, ran off of JavaScript and was kind of emulating kind of the rainstorms that I was seeing in, you know, the rainstorms that I'd seen in Louisiana. Um, there was this really big rainstorm that had flooded New Orleans that year, so I was thinking about it a lot and made a, um, yeah, and was making stuff with that. Um, let me see, what else do I do? Um, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's a lot of the stuff you can kind of follow up on that. Oh, I also make, I also make soundtracks for video games. It's another thing that I'm doing. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, that's a thing that I'm doing. I'm 
working on one right now called uh, Gay Monster Kiss Club. <laughs> it's, it's the name of this one. It's a um, gay dating dig- uh, visual novel. Um, yeah, a monster dating visual novel specifically. Um, yeah, it's by the uh, one of the developers of Ginderect, if anyone's familiar with um, with that game. It's been kind of big in like queer indie game dev circles. Um, they're my buds. Um, so I'm working on that right now, too. Um, I think that's everything. Sorry if that was a big, long ramble of just stuff, but um, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I do. Um, Yes, I do. Um, so all of my Game Boy games you can find at tambalaya.itch.io. I realize I forgot to mention this, but when I usually when I perform, I go under tambalaya, like jambalaya, but with a T. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, if you just search, if you search tambalaya, you'll find tambalaya.itch.io, tambalaya bandcamp, um, Twitter dot com slash tambalaya follow me i i shit post a lot but you know um (laughs) you can feel free to um but yeah so the games that are on itch all of them are set up to all of them are set up so that you can download them like pre-installed into a Game Boy emulator. So you can just run it off of a PC. Um, you can also get the ROMs themselves. And if you have a Game Boy emulator that you particularly like, you can put it on there. If you have an emulator on your phone or like have one of these that by the way, um, I forgot to mention the, this, but these cartridges here have this little micro USB connector, which is how I get them into the, um, which is how I get my files from the uh, computer into these. Um, they're really useful. These got super expensive really recently, but you can find others like them that are super cheap. Um, uh, but yeah, you can find it. You can find most of these at tambalaya.itch.io. I think um, the work in progress is the only one that isn't up there right now. Um, yeah. Go play them. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, <laughs> demo session tomorrow just that yeah um tomorrow at three i will be setting up um i will be setting up a few of these for people to play um as you may remember from the like speed round introductions at the beginning of the um at the beginning of the session uh, a chaffle arcade was made to be a multiplayer thing that i sometimes perform solo um, I'll have the multiplayer set up there so you can hear, yeah, so y'all can like perform with each other with the different instruments. Um, I'll also have a kind of multi cart set up with just everything on it. Um, and you can play that too. I'll leave little instructions for how to play each of them and you can go and make weird sounds with them and again experience them on this side of things. Um, yeah, that's what to expect tomorrow. (laughs) 